Hey, what's up? We should be live. Sorry for that horrible sound. I was moving the mic arm. I hope everyone's doing well. And uh, today we're going to critique your paintings. It's going to be fun. Uh, I'm going to do it digitally so that I'm just going to open everything up. Um, so I have it in front of me and I can actually mark stuff, show you what I would do differently and so on. But in any case, thank you so much for being here and we'll get started. Hey, um, is this Amelia? I'm not sure. Uh, can we do digital paintings? Yeah, definitely. Um, so one thing I will say is if you're not getting yours critiqued today because I just took whatever I had and of course you may have sent them to me afterwards, um, just send them over. I'll get them the next time. Okay, we're going to have many more of these. So don't worry about that. Uh, hey, David, hope you're doing well. Hey, Pat. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Ted, my friend. How are you? Hey, John, hope you're doing super duper well too. Um, I'm playing around with showing the uh, chat on the screen, so I hope that looks nice. Uh, let me actually open the stream on YouTube and see what it looks like on mine. Yeah, that looks good. Good, good, good. And then I can just look at this screen and uh, some of you can see the, your own chat and I'm happy. I got it right, Amelia. That's super cool. So this week's been, I'm just going to riffraff for a bit to let more people get in. This week has been quite intense in terms of um, content. I worked almost purely just on content for you. Um, that was pretty much the, that's, that's better. <laughs> that was pretty much the uh, only thing I did because uh, I wanted to be prepared for next week too. Um, so that I have all everything lined up, uh, not only on YouTube, but in other places as well. Um, and I must say, I got a lot of views on YouTube lately, especially the shorts. Um, so I was really, really happy about that uh, and quite grateful, honestly. Uh, let me resize this thing here. One second, you won't see. To, maybe I'll stop it here. There we go. Um, so yeah, I've been really grateful for that and I want to um, make sure I continue pumping out good, good content for you. Uh, hey, Spidey. Uh, oh, man. Wait, wait. So give me a second. Is it Trisha? I'm not sure. <laughs> Please let it be Trisha. I hope so. Hey, Luis, I also have a painting by you to show today. So it's going to be super duper fun. So let's jump into it. And uh, we're going to be here, I think. Yeah. And now I just need to figure out what I do with the chat box in this screen because I have no idea. So one thing I can do is just get rid of this and that and just kind of put it here and hope it stays there. Uh, is it okay to send a painting without a reference? Ask sci-fi. <laughs> I like that username. Um, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to send a reference photo. I would prefer if you do, but if you don't have it or no, that's perfectly fine. Um, if I do this, yeah, man. Okay, I'll leave it this size. This is the first time I'm showing it. Um, so I could resize it, but then you won't be able to read anything because it's going to be super small. So let's just keep it like that for now. Uh, what matters actually is what you see um, here on the screen. Let me switch over to this kind of a thing. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, I'm gonna get this kind of a thing. And yeah, so this is what matters, right? I'm gonna show you some corrections over. Um, but let's see who's in the house. Uh, Spidey, yes, I remember, yes, I'm so happy to hear. Um, it was, uh, it, it's tough, it's really tough connecting sometimes people and, and usernames, so it's a struggle, but I'm happy I remembered. Uh, Stephanie, how are you doing? Greetings from Illinois, watching as my two-year-old daughter and I eat breakfast. Oh, cool, enjoy our breakfast. Uh, hey, Avi, how are you doing? Hey, Lev, hope you're doing well. Uh, Amelia, yes, again, uh, through email, and if I don't get it this time, I'll get it the next time. Um, we have quite a few to go over now. Uh, so we'll start with our pod who sent me, I believe, five paintings. Yes. And um, and Merry Christmas, Cubs with. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Ishtar. Uh, can I ask a weird question? Yeah, feel free to ask a weird question. Worst case, I'm not going to answer it. Um, but let me... Um, hmm, I'm going to have to do this. So it looks... Or maybe, you know what? Okay, chat's a little weird, but you'll you'll have to forgive me. Again, my first time showing it on the screen like that, I'll figure it out. Well, we'll make it look better. Uh, hey, Erica, how are you doing? From uh, Zanesville, Ohio, cool. Um, 
So yeah, we'll get started with our pod and then we'll continue. Um, wearing a hoodie, I don't know why I was cold in my head, so I just decided to wear one. Is that weird? I don't know. Um, opacity, 100%. There we go. Okay, so our pad, you're going to be our first uh, <laughs> victim. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm going to look at some of your works. Our pod means vampire in Hebrew, by the way, so it's interesting. Uh, so um, you sent me a few of them, and honestly, you're really good. I really, really like it. So I'm going to talk a bit about what I feel like is your strength, uh, strengths, and then what I feel like um, some of the things to work on. Okay? Um, so one thing I noticed that you're really good at, and that's preserve that, that's really, really good, um, is your shapes and the way you connect them is super duper good. Um, so I'm, I'm, I can even show you multiple examples, but like, can you tell everyone, and this is, you, can, uh, you can learn a lot from it, can you tell that this entire shadow was done in one go and you can really see how all of these shapes are connected, right? This connects to this here, connects to this, like this is a connection between the major shape. This is all one big shape, which I love. Now, we'll add to that the fact that you actually took care of the edges, right? So you have some very interesting ones, sharp edge here showing this is a wall and something behind it. And then you have smooth edge here, smooth ed edge there. Great control of shapes. I love that. And that's a, a serious highlight to me. Um, also, in terms of colors, you're varying them up, which I like a lot. So the green here is very, it feels very good. It feels like there's a nice variety. You have some more green, some more yellow areas, even some more orange brown, which is very important to show, you know, the nuances of uh, green. Here it's a bit more muted. Uh, so I'm going to give you two points of feedback and we'll see if it if it's relevant throughout the painting, the other paintings. So one thing I would say in this example, and I'm going to try and relate this to everyone who's watching. So if you're listening to this, you're looking at someone else's painting, you can actually learn a lot from it. Um, one thing, and that's one of the hardest things to do, is the main idea of the painting. So right now it kind of feels like, especially with this one, that these are two separate paintings, which is totally fine. But I think in terms of overall composition, you may want to better plan out the idea of the painting so that you have a more holistic uh, result uh, where everything is in communication with the other. So one thing you could do is possibly just get this a little closer to the uh, to the house, make it just look a little more like it's a part of it. Uh, one tool you can use and not necessarily in this one, but uh, generally speaking, is overlap. When you have a shape overlapping another shape, that really tells a story. And you actually got that here with the grass, right? You could get it with maybe putting a tree up here somewhere, or maybe like this kind of a more triangular tree, and then this negative space is what creates the uh, impression of overlap, right? Because right now it feels like two separate ideas. Nothing wrong about that. But again, a bit more planning. Now, the second point I want to give is actually about colors. So I feel like, and this was more apparent in some of the other ones as well, this one's good. So this one, this feedback is not related to, um, and also not this one, because there are very few colors. Um, so especially, I would say for this one, for numbers one, two, and four, colors. So every color you use looks good, and you keep it interesting, and you keep it varied, like the greens I mentioned, like this section here, these different shapes look really good. They use all of the nuances of grays and, and colors. They look really good on their own. Together, I feel like some of the, and this can relate to the main idea of the painting. Like again, if you have an overall theme that you've decided upon and you planned out, maybe you'll get a gradual transition from more of a blue green towards more of a yellow green, right? Or maybe something in the middle, you know, just maybe there will be an overlapping theme with the colors. Right now, I feel like the colors, and it's very subjective. So maybe it's just my taste, but I feel like some of the colors feel separate. They don't feel together enough, okay? And this goes also here. These greens and reds, to me, they don't communicate fully well. Um, maybe you're using, probably maybe more than three colors. So it throws off the harmony a bit if you don't know how to use them properly. 
Um, same like here, this red doesn't work well to me with this blue. I don't know what it is exactly, but it just feels a little off. But one thing I do want to go back to my previous feedback, like the connections you make are top notch. I love that. I love that you have the courage to simplify this entire cityscape into just, you know, roofs and individual shapes that shows a lot of courage and, and also a lot of understanding of patterns. So great job on that front. Okay. Um, here. When you have just one or two colors, it looks so good. Um, so I would say to preserve shapes, the way you control them and the edges, really, really good. And that's something most people have a lot of trouble with. And then the second thing is the way you vary your colors are great. Now, the main key feedback for you is the overall idea. Decide on a predetermined, try and decide on like the overall impression. What's my main focal point? What's a supporting focal point, right? Are, do they communicate well? Are they too far apart? Should you get them closer together? And then the colors. Maybe try, if you're not using three colors, just use three blue, red, and yellow, same ones. See how it goes. See how it works for you. Sometimes it's not the colors themselves, but the way you mix them as well. So that could be an issue too. Just saying. Uh, this would be pretty much my feedback to all of these. I, I love your edges. I love the way you play with them, right? But, but sometimes I'm missing a bit of a, an overall thing like it's not clear to me what I should be looking at so for example here it's an improvement you have this very um, 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 blurry kind of simplified background right but then you have quite a lot of things and details going on in the trees and in the houses and in this thing here um, that's really off to the side I would love to see this amount of detail here where this house is and then maybe keep this a little looser, right? So that shows me that you're thinking about the overall message of the painting. Okay, just a few um, ideas to throw at you. Uh, let's see if I have any specific things. Like here, I love the colors, it feels more together. This gray sticks out just a bit. I would think like, why is it that cool compared to the rest, you know? Maybe it should be warmer, maybe, I don't know, I'm not sure. I do like that you inject it with red here. So that's really good. Again, connections, I love that. That's one shape, it's very clear, it looks good. Um, uh, this one as well, we talked about, and this one, this one's mwah, really good. Uh, so this is my feedback to you, Arpad. I think you did a wonderful job with all of these. This one is my favorite in terms of execution. But if you want to hear my favorite in terms of, in the context of your type of work, not my idea of what I like, let me think about it for a second. Because, uh, yeah, I like this one a lot. I like this one a lot. I would say, hmm, it's a hard choice to me between this one and this one. I'd go with the first one. I love that. This looks so good. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> let's see who's uh, in the house. Again, who's in the chat. <coughs> Um, dum, 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 dum. Ishtar, you wanted to ask a question. Hey, Sunil, how are you? Uh, Ishtar asks, why are you wearing a hoodie? Yeah, so there was a cold in the head. Uh, Ajul Dev, hey, how are you doing? Your hair is nice, I like it, thank you. Yeah, I, I, it's time for a haircut though, a bit from the sides especially, it's a little too much. Uh, hey, Avi, hope you're doing super well again. Uh, Deb Raj or Debra, I'm not sure. Uh, hey, sir, I'm also an aspiring artist. I love your watercolors. How beautifully you depict water, beautiful scenes without details. I just love it. Thank you so much. Uh, Spidey, uh, Merry Christmas to you too. Sharif, hi from New York City. I love New York. Thank you for being here, Sharif. Lisa, good morning from uh, Boise, Idaho. Thank you for being here. Uh, Amelia, what's the best way to make colors communicate in your opinion? Um, so one of the easier ways is again to use just three colors. Um, here's an interesting idea for you. Think about amounts of saturation. So how saturated is a color? And that's actually a great lens through which to analyze this painting, for example. So when you look at say this green, right? It's fairly strong. This yellow, they're fairly strong, right? So if we just sample a bit of the colors, we'll get like this green, maybe this green, this yellow green, this green, this green, right? And maybe around here. So you see, we have all sorts of variations. Now, when we look at this color, on the other hand, it's mostly grays, right? Now, when I look at this, the thing I ask myself is why are the greens and, and different elements so saturated while this 
house or structure is so muted. It feels a little detached. And I think that goes back to the idea of composition. So if you want to make them a little more connected, I would start thinking about how can I make this as saturated as some of that. So well, let's take this green, turn it into an orange. And then if I just and you know, of course, it's a very, uh, very uh, loose, let's say it's not really orange, more of a brown. But like if I start feeding just a bit more information, let's say I have this as a blue door, right? Something like that. Maybe this entire structure gets just a little more of a colorful treatment. But something gentle, you know, something like this. Just as an example, right? And I'm I'm sorry I'm messing with your with your painting or pod. I mean, it's just to show to to show the idea. You see? So now we're starting to equalize the saturation, right? And then I ask myself, okay, maybe the background I want to be a little more neutral, right? And then maybe I'll end up painting it a bit more like this just partially right not everything but but partially with some variations some maybe this some maybe a little more on the yellow side right you see how it starts to just equalize the saturation a bit it's less jarring of a difference that's the thing i'm talking about um let's look at another one so let's do um this one, yeah, I was curious about this one, right? So what we have here is a very um, saturated rooftops and very neutral water. The water, this blue is very weak, right? So I would go for the same or a similar amount of saturation, especially if I can in the front, okay? So let me uh, select this area with the lasso. So I'm gonna select the entirety of the water. I'm gonna do my best here. Oh, hey, Arpad, every year here. Uh, I hope that helps. We'll go back to the previous one in a second because I really feel like I added a few interesting bits to it that may uh, show you how to improve. Again, I'm not, a lot of it is subjective. A lot of it is a matter of taste and what, what people like individually. So I'm not gonna say this is the right way. But if I were to look at the water, maybe it could be a good idea to start them a little more, you see, a little stronger to equalize the saturation with the rooftops. And then maybe I'm gonna inverse my selection and maybe for the rooftops that are a little far, I'm actually gonna make them a little bit more neutral, a little bit gray, something like this. See how it starts to put things in, in kind of a nice context. You see what I mean? Uh, so again, this was before, and then I just added a bit of the rooftops were so saturated, let's equalize it with the water a bit. Now, it doesn't mean that for every single painting you make, all the saturation should be the same. Here's what happens, though, in reality. When you look even at me here in the camera, usually things tend to be of equal amount of saturation. Why? Because the light conditions, light and shadow conditions are identical. So. Right now I have a top light, I have a light coming from the window. Light is really responsible for a lot of the fact that things look more saturated or less saturated. It's not the only factor because there is the local color, like this is red. No matter under what light you're gonna put it, it's gonna be a red. But with different light and shadow conditions, and this is green, right? It's gonna affect both. So if I were to turn on this additional light here, Immediately, it influences this and that the same way. We're so used to seeing it that we can't really comprehend, but it influences everything in the same way. In fact, I'm going to leave it open for now. It affects both of these the same way. And this leads to congruency. But when you have such a difference in saturation, sometimes things can feel a little incongruent. And this is what happens in some of these paintings. So as soon as I equalize the saturation a bit, it makes sense that these roofs are so, that it makes sense that these roofs are so um, saturated because look at the water, the water is also saturated, right? Same goes for this. Now uh, it makes sense that the, the background is this saturated and the house is this, I'm equalizing them. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I hope that that's helpful. Okay, that, that I'm happy about that because this is a really important piece of advice. Now, again, it doesn't mean every painting you make should have the same level of saturation, 
But one thing to consider is usually the light and shadow conditions will equalize it. And then here's what you do. You can choose an area to make more saturated or less saturated than all of the rest. And that's another tool to mark it as a focal point. So if you look at the door of the house right now, it's much more attractive in the, in the real sense of the word attractive. You know, it just attracts your eye to it. Doesn't mean it's better than what was there before. But now it's a statement, oh, this is the focal point. Look at here, right? Um, whereas before that, it was just another part of the house. And the message, I feel like, wasn't clear enough. So if we go back uh, to the editing history and we'll just compare the two, right? So this was before and then this was after. I actually really like how this one turned out. So I'm just going to save it as a project. Um, not the original. Um, save as. I do want to save it to my desktop because I may use it for uh, future, I don't know, so this is gonna be the, sorry, I'm being selfish for a moment. So this, actually I just need it as a JPEG. So this is gonna be the after. Cause this is gonna remind me maybe to film a video on the topic. And then this is gonna be the before. I want to have two copies of this. Uh, save as before. But in case, yeah, Arpad, I hope this is helpful. You're doing really well. Um, it'll, you're really in the right direction. Um, with your shapes, with your colors, with everything. Um, but I hope this will help you kind of make that next leap. Uh, sometimes we get stuck and I'm, I feel like I'm currently like that. Uh, I'm just stuck somewhere and it takes a bit of uh, effort to move on to the next point and that's perfectly okay. So let's open up the next uh, work that's David E. And most of these I haven't even gotten enough time to think about so I don't really know what I'm gonna say but I'm just gonna uh, look at them and figure out. Now as we look at this one, let's see uh, what you're saying again in the chat. Uh, Zara, the paintings are so pretty, I really like the mountain painting. Yeah, I like that a lot too. Uh, Donna, you're rocking the hair earlier on, thank you so much. Uh, let's see if all the chat uh, yeah, okay, we're seeing some of it. Uh, Robert looks good cropped. Thank you. Uh, Jan's art, I love the greens in the house one. Spidey, thank you. Uh, Joey Best, hello again from Minneapolis. Thank you for being here. Erica, how to prevent overlaying a painting? I overwork and add too many details and tend to lose the transparency of the medium. Generally speaking, you want to do as many edits as you can while the paint is still wet so that it's one shape that's very merged together. It's very hard to overwork it if you keep the shape wet and you just add and remove, add and remove, but you keep it wet. So one thing you can do is use a sprayer to keep it wet for a longer time and just keep working at it. I would actually practice doing this specifically, manipulating paint while it's wet. Now, the solution for you may be use wetter paint. Because some people hear, okay, wet and wet, and then they use too dry of paint, they don't have enough time to rework it. So more water. One of the things that allowed some, most of Arpad's uh, paintings to be so good at the shape, to be so, um, so unified, is he is using enough water. That's really important. Arpad, sorry, I don't know if you're a he. So I just, I just guessed, uh, but I don't know. They are using enough water and that gives you enough time. Okay, so more water would probably be the solution for many people, Erica, and maybe for you too. Jan's art is six below zero and blowing snow in Kansas City. I have on three hoodies, oh yeah. It's funny because I, I picked out of all timings, I picked this timing to release the video of don't be scared to paint outside or whatever. It's like everyone's, it's freezing here. I'm not gonna paint outside, so that's funny. Um, Arpad, thank you very much for your tips. I'm so grateful that you take your time to help us. I'm ready uh, to get painting and awesome. Uh, yeah, so Donna, these are Arpad's uh, paintings. He's right above you in the comments. Uh, Vagabond, uh, hi Liron, hi Chad. Hey, thank you for being here. Uh, Joel, thanks so much for sharing your talent. God bless you, bro, from the Philippines. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. Happy this helps. Muna Ira, please be upon you. Not sure how to read this uh, for your paintings. Uh, love all your uh, paintings. Need more and more and more. Thank you so much. Uh, there's going to be many more of these critiques. 
Uh, Lisa, wow, this is helpful, the saturation topic, yeah. Uh, Donna, adding an additional light source affects everything the same, allow, allowing, uh, of course, for the distance. More distant objects are not affected as much. Yep, yep, that's true. Uh, hey, RK, hope you're doing well. Spidey, is green your favorite color? Definitely not. My favorite color would be like a red or a yellow, something like that. Uh, can't paint outside, the water will freeze before I can even start thinking about wet and wet. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, okay, next up we have David E. David E, are you here? I'm not sure. Um... I tried sticking to uh, one letter for the last name just to keep the file name shorter, uh, but here we go. So there's actually quite a lot to discuss here. You're, uh, and you haven't mentioned whether this one's done or not, and it may just be an incomplete work, but it's missing in the shadows uh, and in the mid values especially. So you're, you're simply missing more darks. Um, the way we really read subjects as three-dimensional is mostly in the mid values. The highlights tell a bit of a story, the very dark shadows and areas tell a bit of a story too, and then the mid values is where it's really happening. So, and this is easy because I already have something to base it off, your sketch, your painting. If I just add a layer of black, but I'm going to make the layer transparent so that you will see under it, all I really need to do, and I can maybe use this kind of a brush here, kind of an oily brush. All I really need to do is just bring out the shadows properly. So, um, let's try it out. Yeah, that's a good size. Uh, yeah, that's good. So, and I'm just using a gray here, but uh, you could use, of course, you'll use different colors to do this, but you'll notice how there's pretty strong shadows around the eye and around here, around the face. Not to mention, of course, inside the mouth, we'll get there later. Uh, but good job on the drawing, like you really got it um, down pretty accurately. And then this goes here, this goes there. Um, see, see, the shadow is, it's big. There's, it's, it's much darker than you have it. And that starts to, I'll need something that I can blend the edge of. Maybe that'll work a little better. Round mixing brush, I think that's what I need, yeah. Um, see? And then the hair. You can really tell with the hair. Maybe again, this is maybe incomplete, but like the hair, this entire side is darker, right? It's much darker. Under the nose, it's dark, right? The the sides of the face are dark. That's how you start to establish a bit of three dimensionality, right? And goes here. See, even the middle that's kind of lighter, it's still quite dark, right? And I can see a hint of these things with you but it's not fully there. And then once you get that in, you can start thinking about um, the actual darkest darks. This is a funny reference photo, but yeah. See, a little stronger, right? So you're missing essentially the mid values. Now, some of the drawing could be a little more accurate, that's okay, um, that, that'll that come with time. Um, some of the, let's get rid of this for a second here. Um, I like that you're using temperatures, so I can, you, you know, you can really see that you're, um, that you're using, um, why won't it let me, yeah, uh, you can tell it that you're using a bit of warmth and cool, or right? blue, yellow, that's great. Um, <coughs> the drawing, again, could use some work. So I would say a bit more accuracy in the drawing, and then you really want to follow the colors and build it up. If you're scared to do it in one go, you know, build it up in, in layers. Do one layer and another layer and another layer. Now, you have an interesting thing going on, generally speaking, with the saturation, and that is things are a little too strong in terms of the colors. Um, not everywhere, but some parts. So like this red here, notice how it's quite dark and muted, whereas you got it really strong. And like her lips, that's quite strong. Now you, haven't gone strong enough even in those. So you almost have it inverted, and that's a very common issue, and it's okay, it's something that'll take time. It's just very easy to see this and think, oh, it's red, it's a very strong red, and then you go ahead and paint this strong red, and it's a little too strong, okay? So a little confusion in the colors, that's okay. I would actually choose an easier reference to, to, to paint, because this one's tough. For me, it would be tough as well. Um, so I would, a, a couple of suggestions. Uh, easier references that have just a clear dark and light, uh, like the portraits I often paint. Um, I would try to practice a bit in black and white as well, 
and then really notice the, the mid values. That's very important. This, right? Not the highlights, not the very dark darks where most people miss is in the mid values. Okay, that's where you want to pay attention to those. Okay, that's pretty much uh, what I have for this one. And we're going to move on to David H. Oh, this one's cool. Um, so we have a bunch of pastry. So that's a good one to stop. And as I look at the chat, because, you know, we're all, we all like food. <laughs> um, Amelia, what's the email? We're supposed to send you your paintings. It's just Liron at Lironian.com. Uh, do I have it here somewhere? No. Um, you can find it on my channel. Just go to the About tab and it should be there. Um, and I can also just add it to... There you go. Feel free to. Um, and I'll get it the next video, probably. Uh, Tala, <coughs> can't paint outside. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's tough. How can I send you my paintings? Okay, we mentioned that. Hello from Iran. Thanks about saturation tip. You got it. Uh, Sarah, is, that's a cat hiding in a box. Uh, David Harrison, you could give us all the same reference photo to paint so you can critique the same painting by different artist yeah just a thought so one thing we could do is just um i can do a tutorial and then i'll ask you to send me what you painted based on the same tutorial that, that can definitely be done maybe i'll do that maybe i'll do a video not next week because i already have these scheduled but the week after i'll do a process hmm. yeah and then i'll say around the beginning or the end you know paint it send it over we'll take a look um, somewhere up there. I have nothing good enough to send. I don't believe you. But yeah. Um, Vagabond, it's great to have the chat on screen. Yeah, it's, it's nice, right? Well, I'll just have to figure out how to show it a little more gracefully. But I like the way it looks. Uh, you got it, Tala. Happy I can help. Um, so, next up, yes. David, uh, is, that's you, right, David? <laughs> uh, so, pastries, I love this. Um, you know, I actually don't have too much to say about that. It looks delicious, so that's great. Um, one thing you can think about um, is just in terms of... So, this is something very common, and I'd actually... I, I, I avoided editing the photo. It looks a little dark, like taken with not enough light um but i wanted to keep it that way just so that it shows because maybe that's what you meant maybe that's how you painted it um one thing to think about is um the overall composition and adding maybe a focal point so one thing you can do is uh let the shapes around the edges go a little looser and maybe there's an attempt to do it here i'm not i can't tell for sure uh, but it does look like, you know, there's a bit fewer details there. But for the most part, your edges are quite sharp. Everything around the edges is quite sharp. So one idea, again, is to keep things a little looser there. Um, it just brings stuff into better focus. Um, so, and then one more thing you can do is to serve the purpose of a focal point vary the colors a bit. So one thing you have going on here, and that's a very common thing that people do, it's, I'm saying thing and not mistake, because it's not necessarily a mistake, uh, and that is to use pretty much the same color almost, but with varying degrees of darkness. So what's called, I guess, tonal shading, maybe, where it's, it's pretty much the same color. And if you just vary it a bit, it could go a long way. Now, because everything is quite warm, one form of varying it could be just to use a neutral gray. Now, when you look at this gray, it almost looks cool, almost, because compared to these other colors, it's less warm. So you could actually utilize a bit of gray here and there and make this just, just break it off a bit. Now, if you really want it there, go with a bit of a cooler, slightly cooler gray, right? And it's just one more way to add some interest to the colors, okay? And I'm not saying here, do it here, do it there. I'm just giving you another idea. 
You could go a little more, like vary it a little more. Uh, let's see what we have here. So we have this kind of a, yeah. So if we're going for the same kind of level of saturation, that would be kind of the, the blue we'd go with, maybe something like this, right? N notice, especially this, the last one I added actually looks really nice. Like this kind of a blue just fits perfectly in the color scheme. Um, <laughs> it was all I could do to stop myself from eating them. Oh yeah, that's funny. So you just you just force yourself to paint them instead. That's great, genius. Um, so yeah, that's one more thing you can do. And look at how much more interesting it looks together with that last blue, right? It just gives it one more dimension in a way. So it's one thing to think about. One, just be aware whenever you're shading with the same pretty much color, different levels of darkness, it's just something to be aware of, okay? so. When you catch yourself doing that, you just say, okay, I'm using the same color. Do I want to vary the colors of it? Something to be develop an awareness for. Uh, I would say that's pretty much it. Um, you could go with more range in the values, but you do have some darks here. Like, like these are quite dark, so I'm not gonna uh, be over your case in that regard. That's okay, that's pretty much, you have, you have the variety. Now, let's turn this uh, black and white for a second. Can I do it like this? No. Um, where is that option? I'm just not sure because I don't do a lot of uh, editing, photo editing in um, Flip Studio Paint. Uh, edit, probably edit. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Like I just need a basic, a basic. Uh... Or you know, I know what I can do. I can go ahead and turn this to gray. There we go. Yes, yeah, so hmm, I'm not sure if it's the way you took the photo. Yeah, I had a suspicion actually. So one thing you could try and do to improve this even more is just to go a little lighter even, get a little closer to the highlights in some spots. You got close here, and again, maybe it's just the way the photo was taken, but you can push the highlights to be a little stronger. And then if you take, if you make the shadows as dark, but maybe, maybe get them a little bit cooler, Look at how nice that looks, you see? And it's just a few pointers to improve the colors and kind of the feel of it. Because if we turn it into um, gray, you can really tell that a bit of the highlights are missing. Let me get rid of all of this and then we'll go back to gray. See, a bit missing on the value scale. So it's a little flat. Uh, it's almost the, the opposite of the problem most people have. They go very light, very dark. You have a lot of mid values, maybe a bit more in the sides. Uh, but yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, again, a bit more of this and then a bit more of light here and there. Could go a very long way. Uh, I hope this advice makes sense. Let's see. Um, Pranjal, what do you think of uh, realism with watercolors rather than loose paintings? I enjoy it. I just did a fairly Realistic one yesterday, probably some of you have seen this. This is Jocko. Uh, there you go. Jocko Willink in watercolor. <laughs> That's quite a realistic one. Um, not fully realistic, not as detailed as it could be. But yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, to me, it's just the thing I enjoy more is looseness. And then once in a while, I'll really enjoy a more a tighter, I guess, uh, painting. Um, Cobbs, I think maybe everyone should send one to at most so there's time for more people. Yeah, and we're just gonna do more of these, so don't worry about it. I'm trying to consolidate the feedback, you see, so I did all of our pods together. Um, Joel, thank you so much. Uh, Alex, uh, good evening from the Philippines. David, thanks a lot, Liron. I just see your critiques of my drawing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy that helps. Um, yeah, it could be in the layers tall, I'm not sure. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. Doing critiques is such a challenge sometimes. Because I really want to give you like good suggestions. So we have Heather who sent, uh, if I'm not mistaken, two. I might have missed one, but sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, obviously these are really close. These are very close to the original. Like you did a really good job, um, especially if the goal is to just be accurate. Uh, your colors are on point, very, very close. 
like in terms of accuracy is 90% close. Same goes for this one. Really, really good. Obviously a lot of attention to the details. Just fantastic work. So I would say for you, and I'm not really sure if you're like, I would need to know a bit more about your goals actually to know what to what kind of advice to give you. Uh, I do see something that personally uh, my taste likes something a little different and, and it has nothing to do with the skill of the painting because I see this with some artists that I've been following for a long time now that their skill is like far beyond mine, much more experienced, but still it's a matter of taste. I like when there's a bit more variation in the colors and when you look at a reference photo, it's not really there. Um, so if you're painting it exactly as it is, you're just gonna preserve that. Now, this particular photo actually has some of it, and I wanna show you where. So, especially in the highlights, the way I feel about it, if I stick this color, it's a yellow, right? You can see it here, yeah. It's a, it's a bit of a, on the yellow side, you can tell in the swatch. Now, with you, it's more about the red. So you ended up doing kind of what we've seen in the previous example of shading with the same color. And to me, I like when there are a few underlying hues um, even though the values are different, the hues are varied a bit. So, for example, this yellow here would just bring a bit more of a balance to me in the colors instead of it all being pink, gray, purple, okay? Um, another place I see this in, if you look at these areas, ears tend to have like bright reds in them, which look really, really good. So look at how bright of a color this is. Now, I don't, again, it could be the way the photo was taken. I'm actually not sure, but I'm missing a bit of that here, okay? Uh, areas like this where transitions from light to shadow tend to have that too. Areas like this where it's, again, you see this transition or thin objects, um, transitions like this, and it gives another hue to work with. It just looks really um, interesting in a way. Uh, so I think that kind of a thing could really enrich your work. Just a bit of these touches here and there. Same like this. You see it adds another kind of aspect to it. If, if we grab this color, push it more towards the yellow, right? And it just, I think it just looks so much nicer, right? Let me get a proper size. I just think it adds another dimension to it, okay? And again, you're very skilled, I love that. You did a really good job here. I'm showing you one or two things that could maybe elevate this even more. Again, maybe, right? Um, oops, it's, yeah, it's, it's blending in with the other colors, which I didn't want. I just wanted to show the pure color. Um, just a little, see, and I'm using the same one. I'm not even following necessarily the colors I see. So the way I like to do this is I'll notice there's a bit of yellow there and then I just use the same yellow everywhere. Um, so yeah, I, I have this thing where I don't always like, again, tonal shading, it's just one tone. So that's something to have in mind. Uh, here, kind of the same feedback applies. Uh, I just don't see really much you could add and play with. You could go a bit more blue in some spots. Um, so for example, so let, let's do like a real blue, like this is way too exaggerated, right? But if you just go a little, I think a little more, even towards this kind of a thing, dark, but not too dark. See, like, look at this here. See how it plays in the blue purple? That's a bit more variation you could get here. I would push it more towards the blue, honestly speaking. And it just adds, but a little darker. Just adds another dimension to it. Uh, like this color here would be big help in varying it and making it a little more interesting. You can even see it here, see? These blues, just to break off a bit of that, because essentially what you have when you have a lot of oranges and browns, like here, right? You have a lot of oranges and kind of browns. Maybe this is on the verge of being purple. What are these colors? A lot of yellow and a lot of red. So we're missing a bit of blue. Right, I hope that makes sense. Um, that, that's the thing I'm missing when I look at it, just a bit blue, because there's, there's yellow, there's red. I want a bit of that, just to break it off a bit. Uh, very tonal. Nothing wrong with that, especially if you're trying to mimic it. But even if you're trying to mimic this accurately, you can see a lot of this blue here. So I would capture that as well. Um, let's see. 
Um, the, that painting looks amazing. How do you visualize where the highlights are to leave them out? Yeah, so usually, and I think if you're going back to the pastries, it's usually the parts that are um, aimed towards the light source. So for example, if you have a cross on this top part, because the light comes from above, will be most exposed to light. So it's going to be this. Now, I have an easier time because I'm looking at already painted paintings, so I can kind of estimate where these areas are. The clearest answer would be to look at the reference photo. Okay. One thing I really like about this one is how you exaggerated the snow. That looks really cool too. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of good things about this one. Again, I'm giving you some, and, and you matched some tough colors, like this this area here. These, you got them very accurately, very accurately. Uh, let's see if something goes on in the values that's interesting. No, that's pretty spot on. That's really good. Um, great job. Great job, Heather. Uh, thanks for the answer. Thank you, Pranjal. Uh, thank you, Amelia. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the ones you send me now and the next time because there's a, still a lot to go through. Somewhere up there. Okay, now after seeing the dog <laughs> and Rip, I really have nothing. <laughs> Never compare yourself to other people. I'm sure you do. You know, I'm out of curiosity, if you don't mind somewhere up there, um, if you don't mind me seeing some paintings, just send them over and let me know. It's just to your eyes. Don't critique or anything. I'm, I'm just curious to see if you don't mind. Uh, if you do, it's perfectly okay. But I'm just curious to see your work. Uh, Tat, nicely done, indeed. Uh, Tala, when will be the next uh, critique live? Be uh, I think in two weeks, maybe something like that. We can do one. I didn't see the blue tones in the dog's head until you pointed out the yellow on the portrait's cheek. Yep. Uh, thank you, Liron, uh, aka Heather. Yep, yep. Thank you to everyone who sent paintings. Thank you for your courage. Oh, by the way, one thing you could like that I really like here and you didn't include is just you see the background. You have a blue here that you can use. And I, I get it. Some people like to change the background, like a specific background. I think the background is a very interesting part of this because this green, it looks good. It has the things that I'm missing a bit, you know, it just brings in a bit more color to the picture, which I like. Um, but again, yeah, this is really a matter of taste if you want to include a background or not. Um, so let's see, we have Isha and we have two paintings. So I'm going to do these together. So two different styles, obviously you're going to see. So this is more watercolor. Uh, this is more, uh, colored pencils, I guess. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> let's start with the colored pencil. I actually don't have much to say about that because I'm not an expert in colored pencil whatsoever. Um, I think the drawing could be a little more accurate, like a little more symmetry in the eyes. And I suspect they were asymmetrical in the original photo as well. Um, but something there I think could be a little more accurate. Now, I don't know, again, I'll have to see the picture for that, but maybe some of the values are off. I feel especially around this area, the expression could could be done a little better. So funny enough, let's see if, if I can do this. See, this looks a little more accurate than all of this, and including this ear, by the way. Um, I'll have to see the reference photo for that, but I feel like that's that. So a bit more attention to the drawing, and then the values I'd have to see and compare one to one. Uh, but, but really nice. You have a very nice range of values here, uh, especially in the nose area. This is really clever. Let's go back to color. This here is really clever. You know, the, actually I like it like this as well. Like the, the shiny nose, that's a cool effect of, for painting dogs. I love that shiny lips too. You know, this black, it, it usually has a lot of shine here and here. They're really, really nice. The teeth, uh, getting the teeth like this accurately is very tough. Uh, so great, great job on that. Uh, let's look at the other one and do the comparison. Uh, hey, Plumpy, how are you doing? And hey, Rattlesnake, hope you're doing well. Uh, okay. So for this one, um, again, there's a matter of clarity. So I'm missing a bit of clarity of what's my focal point. Everything is very detailed and maybe not enough connections. So for instance, the car is quite detailed. The building is quite detailed. This mailbox is quite detailed. The trees are quite detailed. Um, so it's something to have in mind. Now, I do want to talk a bit about colors and then light and shadow. So in terms of colors, same thing we had with our pod. A lot of the colors 
like small areas work really well together. This here, brilliant. I love that. Car, great. It's all gray, it's okay, right? This section, this part of the building, kind of, kind of a, bit, a bit of issues with that. But when you look at it as a whole, something breaks. The conditions aren't identical. So let me show you what I mean by that. The road here, see all of this? It's a very peachy kind of pink, yellow color. And if you notice, it actually reflects in the car, just darker. See? Same for this grayish thing that almost reads as a blue because of its uh, relations to the rest of the paints. So yours is missing some of these. So if I, if I can get, sorry, I actually need the darker one. If I can get some of these variations in, look at how already it just anchors it more to the scene. And then you add that same colors down on the ground. Uh, I would even probably push this to be a little more strong and a little more blue. Just a bit. It anchors, it makes it a part of the whole scene. Everything relates together, right? Even this red here. So to me, it looks quite dark and muted. See how yours is much brighter? So it, it's a bit jarring. If I take that same red, sorry, I'm being fast, I know, but if I take that same red here, it's gonna maybe stand out a little too much. Now, it doesn't look bad, but if I now change everything here um, and make it separate, it won't just won't look good uh, together. Where a lot of people get caught up is, hey, St. Inky, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, hey, Jill, how are you? Um, yeah, Donna, that composition looks great. Um, and Plump, yeah, greeted you. Um, a lot of people get caught up in the gray. The grays are a trap because when you look at this and you think about everything that is gray, we have a tendency to just use gray. So this is gonna be a gray. And this is this entire thing is gonna be just a gray. You know, I need a different brush. This one just does not. Let's use this instead. So this is a gray. 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 Pretty similar to these two. This is a gray, right? This, but. When you look at all of these grays, they are very nuanced. They are very nuanced. And when you see someone like Joseph Z painting a scene almost fully in gray, and it looks so good, and then when you try and do that, your grays end up being meaningless is because you're not aware enough of the nuances in the gray. So if we take these grays here, I want to see how much variety there is in them, if any. See, even this, like, like these windows, see here it's, it's a gray, but here it's kind of a different color. This is a gray, right? This is a little blue, right? So you'll notice how they're very similar, but they're just, the way they're used is different. So you really have to pay attention to these things. L look at this, for example, this is just almost black. This is much, much darker, right? So the relationship between these colors works a little differently than here. Now, I did want to talk a bit about the values. Um, a bit more attention to the, va va to the values and their shape. So for example, the way this foliage wraps around the car, see how there's a bit more to it. Than that like the and the way you used it is very see it's very close to the car and that's a tendency we have to turn shapes into details whereas they're just shapes same goes for this uh, palm tree here it's almost a shape right but you turned it into tons of details where it's, it just should be a shape see just a shape um, so that's what happens when you interpret things a little too how you'd want them to appear and again it's fine um, it's, it's, it's great. You did a great job on many aspects here. I'm just going over these small details because they matter. Now, light and shadow. There's something very important that happens 
um, where you really want to make a statement with your light and shadow and you want to be clear. So for example, if I look at this little vase here, okay, one thing I'm missing is look at how clear the separation here between light and shadow is. It's a very clear transition. It goes here. This is the light and this is the shadow with a bit of light there, right? Now when I look at your shape, because it's a recurring theme, you see how you didn't really capture the full separation between light and shadow. What you'd want to maybe have instead is more of this is the shadow, like real statement. And then this is the light, this sliver of a thing here. It's lighter even, see? Now the reason I'm really focusing on that is that this is a recurring theme in all of the painting. Okay, not enough attention to light and shadow is my point. So if I go again like this, I need the correct layer, like this, see, just not enough attention. If I were to even find like a big major pattern of light and shadow, if anything, it would be, let me think about it for a second. It would be something like this, like a big pattern of light and shadow. Almost like, see? That's a clearer story. It's a clear story and it's missing a bit of clarity there. Okay, now there's a tunnel, we see through it, we can tell where the car is. Maybe there's a strong shadow under the car too. You see, it's just more of a three-dimensional story. So I hope that helps. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. It's a lot to unpack there, so maybe you wanna watch it a few times. Um, yeah, we're good. Okay, I haven't missed. Uh, somewhere up there, I'm so afraid of going dark. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, painting dark areas is scary. I feel like it takes a very steady hand. So here's my suggestion to you because a lot of people are scared of whatever, X, Y, Z. Do two sketches and just decide you're gonna destroy one of them with very dark paint. Just once or twice where you'll go there, you'll see that it's not as bad as you think. Because you just need to do it in order to be able to do it. So if you, you're always avoiding doing it, the solution is to get yourself to do it once. Now, how would you get yourself to do it once? Do it on an insignificant sketch. Do it on something you traced you didn't put much work into. Do it on just a few random shapes. Get yourself to do it once, twice, three times, you'll get it. And then you'll be like, okay, so drawing dark isn't the end of the world. I can, I can change a lot. You see how fast I just went over this here really rough and, and added some dark, clear shadows. And I didn't even add that diagonal one, but it looks really nice too. Um, so yeah, just get yourself to do it once and it will be good. Josh, I sometimes find that I try to go so thick with my black that they appear chalky on top of the rest of the piece. Yeah, that can happen. It can also be an issue of materials or not, like the type of paper, the type of paint, or it could just be a random issue that sometimes happens. Um, okay, Lisa, Lisa B. So right off the bat, um, here's what I say, your colors are great. It's a strong point for sure. Um, the color matching is pretty good. Just a bit more work on the accurate values, once again, the light and shadow. Um, I feel like you're missing some contrast as well. It's almost like you're scared to go dark enough and you don't leave enough highlights. So what I would do is, even if I use the same colors you have here, I'm just gonna go lighter. And then I'm gonna add, and you'll, you'll appreciate this, just highlights to, let's say, the tops of the scale, see? Like this, just... And, and it will immediately make them pop a little more, makes them look more three-dimensional. See? That kind of a thing is missing. And then on the darks front, like going a little stronger than what you have. 
and look at how it makes them really pop as a shape. So that's something I feel like is missing. The colors you've changed and that's okay like because the change is consistent. It's not like previous examples we've seen sometimes. The change is very consistent. Everything is warm, everything is cool. It's, I like that actually, so I'm okay with that. Now here, um, I think some, again, some of the values, it could be the way the photo was taken, but if you look at this, obviously much darker. And if you want to get that sense of depth, like a video I'm going to share with you real soon here. This is going to be uh, next week's, I believe, or Saturday's video. You really need to go that dark. Like you really need all of those darks. Look at how much, how big of an influence it had. This value you got down accurately, more accurately at least. But you really need to go dark in those areas. It doesn't look like you're scared of it. it just looks like maybe you didn't read the colors well enough. Now the textures wall is fantastic. I like it. A lot. Um, it's quite accurate too, I think. Uh, even if we just again take a look, uh, that's pretty accurate. That's close enough. More highlights, more darks. Again, that that area is where you're maybe um, even don't don't be scared to push it. Like look at how much more depth it has now, right? With this, maybe even some details here catching the light. See, just looks good. Um, so yeah, my two cents for that. Um, <laughs> somewhere up there why don't you give us a challenge give us homework to practice dark values yeah and i do some of that in the courses but I'll, I'll i'll do something like this like a lesson with homework in fact let me write it down here um tutorial everyone follows and submit uh for critique so it's the same scene Yes, you've given me some good ideas today. Uh, there we go. Um, Josh, I wonder if just go doing black and white references for a while would help to train that. You know, the answer is yes to everything. Uh, I did a lot of that. If you can interpret a scene in black and white, that's helpful. Even this kind of a... Um, where does it go? Yeah. Uh, even this scene could be interpreted in theory in black and white. The way I like to do it is uh, black, white, and a mid value again. So the way I would paint this scene, um, I would do. I'm trying to figure out where I'll <laughs> where I'll demonstrate this. Let me do this. I'll just do that and. So the way I would probably do this kind of a scene would be um, get the uh, mid values, which is everything but the highlights. So I would just go and paint pretty much everything. Again, I'm not showing you watercolor technique here because I'm just doing this, you know, off the cuff. But I leave some of the highlights and I'll just fill in everything there with the mid values. Pretty much everything actually here. Maybe just a few highlights on the boat. I'm showing you a very rough example. So this would be my first layer and then my second layer would be the darks. Maybe not black but close to black. So it'll be something like this. And like that for the boat. And had I left like good highlights, you'd actually have a highlight around it, but I haven't. So, like an actual highlight here. So, that would be like a very simple study. And then, if I had a way to paint uh, around these shapes when I do the black part, you know, just this kind of a very simple study that's more about. Um, the essence of the scene rather than getting each and every detail right and especially colors because colors are tough so I'd eliminate them in a way and you can get quite a bit of an interesting quite a bit of an interesting um, representation of the scene and learn a lot uh, but yeah let me get rid of this and we'll look at the original by Lisa without my uh, notes mostly and there we go. Uh, so really good job. 
Colors are great too, you know, you really uh, capture them, I think, accurately. Great, great job. Just these little things that I emphasized. Uh, and we will move on to the next. Um, Kangal Fan. I just discovered this channel a day after buying new watercolors, and wow, this guy's awesome. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, and welcome, welcome aboard. Uh, and thank you everyone for being so uh, welcoming. <laughs> it's really Kang. Oh, is it Kang Elfin? Okay, not Kang Elfin. <laughs> Kang Elfin, got it. Uh, Plumpy, have you ever glazed over a black and white piece? Could it be cool to completely flip the tone? What, you mean like completely new? Like over everything, restart? That's interesting. Um, I don't think I ever did that. Maybe with acrylics. Uh, Anita Harmony in colors indeed. Uh, Kang Elfin, uh, yeah, okay, welcome aboard. Once again, thank you everyone for being so welcoming. Uh, Donna, I've been looking for a way to simplify a Venice scene and still capture the atmosphere of Venice. This painting really helps me. Oh, so you'll really get a kick out of... I did another one, Donna. This is another tutorial. Extreme against the light. It's gonna be one I'm also quite excited about. Uh, but yeah, kept it fairly loose. Um, Luis. So I remember reviewing a similar painting. I'm not sure if by you. Uh, but I, re I remember I really, really liked this one. So a couple of things I noticed here. And this, by the way, connects to the pastries from earlier. Like, notice how here there's a bit more looseness around the edges. And you can tell by the edges too, like look at this smooth edge, smooth transition here. This is so good. Um, so that puts more focus on the flowers in the middle. And yes, there are some plays of edges here too. Uh, but yeah, I really like that one. Um, <coughs> in terms of the colors, this has the good stuff I was referring to. I can, f I can see a bit of everything. So it's not tonal shading. So if you look at uh, these yellows here, these blues and these greens, and a bit of an orange around here, uh, it's actually quite interesting, and I, I recognize a bit of everything. There's this nice purple here, um, nice blue there. You're not scared to go with different variations of temperature, warm and cool, uh, yellows, purples, um, and I think that ends up looking really, really good. Um, in terms of, again, the composition itself, uh, edges being a little looser, that's a really good, um, that's a great achievement, honestly. Um, if I were to give like some kind of ad advice, I don't have anything too concrete. Um, I feel like some of the darks on the centers of the flowers could be pushed to be just a little bit darker. Um, just a little bit to bring in some more attention to there, like you did here, pretty much. Maybe just a little stronger. Um, but the question I would ask myself is, did you get the edges where you wanted them to be? So what do I mean by that? Uh, there are a lot of loose edges here and here. And here it's a bit of a mess, but that's fine. And here and here. So there are quite a lot of loose edges. Um, did you get all of the ones you wanted to be loose? And did you keep some sharps? Maybe this area is a little confused. Did you want it? Now you can start asking yourself a bit more of higher level questions. Honestly, I'm super happy about this one. I wouldn't change much. I think I told you this. I'm not sure if I recorded a voice message or something on Instagram. I would not change too much. I'm really nitpicking because it's really just good, good job. Um, one thing I could mention about the technique of the wet and wet, um, not the smooth transitions, but here. So uh, I can tell some of it, you know, started drying. Um, so you may want to do things, you may want to work a bit on the timing, get it faster. Um, cause you probably, you know, you had a wash and then you wanted to darken, but it was a little too late on the timing, right? So if you get an earlier timing, you'd get very smooth transitions here. Now with all of these smooth edges, it's very hard to do this, right? So, so it's not a surprise. It's just very hard to do. And it, technically it's, it's demanding. So you did a great job. That's one thing I would uh, pay attention to. So for example, you can really focus on this area and tell yourself, like focus on it and see it for what it is. Uh, this is my area. I'm gonna work on that. So what I'm gonna do is pre-wet here to get a smooth edge, maybe pre-wet here, maybe a bit there. Then I'm gonna pour the paint into this area. Of course, you'll get a smooth transition here because you pre-wet it, 
right? But this area, let's say, was dry, or maybe you pre-wet the whole thing, the whole area, and then be on that, like be locked on this area and do wet and wet until it's as dark as you want it to. And then you'll get this, this beautiful smooth transition only here as well, right? So it makes sense. Again, a bit nitpicky because it looks so good. You know, I wouldn't change too much at all. Uh, but yeah, great job. Great, great job. Um, yeah, everyone loves the flowers too. Um, hey, Lollipop Strawberry, how are you? Uh, I'm actually considering a clothesline. Oh, cool, Donna. Cool. Uh, let me know what, what kind of ideas you had in mind. It's really not my speciality, but I'm curious. Plumpy Lump, not to restart, just to wash over a completed piece to change the color. Oh, no, I actually have done that before. I actually have. So you mean over completely, like over everything? Because if you remember my boat on the beach video, I go over all of the sand, make it yellower, make it warmer. Um, so that's something you um, may remember. I have done that a few times and I like that. Um, I forgot who it was that, that showed it in a tutorial. Like he painted everything and then painted the sky blue, but there were trees and buildings that intersected with the sky and he just painted over them and it looks really good. Um, so yeah, I think it was David Taylor who did that. Um, these flowers are sick. Yeah, they're really good. Really, really good. Uh, looks like a Marcos, Marcos Beccari. Yep, yep. Everyone loves this one. Yeah, the ed edges, I'm telling you, edges, right values, and a bit of variation on the color. It's like a magic formula. It looks so good, you know? I would even try to include a bit of that red. Because, I don't know, I feel like it has everything. Like, you can see it here, but red. But, of course, you, you don't have to force it. But, like, a bit of red here. Oh, man. This looks good. This looks really sweet. Uh, I'm so going to try to copy that flower painting. Yeah, I actually have a tutorial um, very similar uh, with the flowers if you want to check that out. Something to rely on. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a um, you can find quite a few pictures of flowers in that kind of a setting. Um, I love the where the white turns a bit, you know, warm and cool. You get variation on it. Looks really good. Next up, we have Melanie C. So we have two to go over. Um, and let's just get to it. So uh, pretty much this. So if it's the same kind of things, I'll, I'll just repeat. Um, pretty much the same feedback in terms of colors. Uh, I feel like the organization could be a little better. So this has a very, very clear um, pattern of colors. So you have these yellows, beautiful colors, by the way, beach colors, yellow and this blue. And then you have these cooler shadows that are essentially grays, right? Um, and then a bit of like a lilac-y purpley in the clouds and a bit of even green. Now, you went more towards the green, which is okay. But notice how your colors aren't communicating as clearly. And if you look at the foreground, especially like there's everything, green, red, that's fine, actually, that's a good thing. I feel like there's a bit more of a graceful way to do it. So for example, instead of tons of small patches, maybe make them like four times larger. So you have a green area, a yellow area, an orange area, something like that. But that's more of a matter of taste. I would say it's more about the organization of colors. Look at how clear they are here. Uh, that's something more to strive for. Um, a lot of your shadows are very green, where the shadows are, again, it's a bit of a gray, which is interesting. I would say it's a bit of a gray, which almost makes it look blue, right? And they're very clear too. The shadows are very clear. So again, I can do the whole, you know, for everyone who's, for anyone who's scared of shadows, like try and get some courage from me. Of course, this is digitally and it's not my painting, but just generally speaking, like don't be scared to paint like this, like really go for it when you paint the shadows. Really go for it and get those patterns. Here, it's the only place where it's a bit spread out, right? Um, and I would actually keep most of this area a little more, a little lighter. Um, I like better this combination, but again, this is a matter of choice. Now, I'll give you the fact that you've done an excellent job in some areas with the light and shadow. So for example, uh, this here, 
is fantastic. Look at how well this mountain ridge uh, reads. Like you really know from afar what you're looking at and from up close. It looks really good. Um, so a bit more organization in the shadows, a bit more in the values. We have the same thing with saturation. Again, the sky is the only thing that's a little blue and it's very muted. Um, I would equalize it a bit, go a little brighter, especially if you're trying to convey a brighter day. Okay, uh, let's move on uh, to the next one here. Hey, Shivani, just popping in between Zoom meetings to say hello. Thank you so much. Hope you have a good day. Hope the meetings aren't too uh, tasking. <laughs> Um, Donna, so hard to leave this great video, but I have to go. We'll catch and replay. Yeah, no worries about that. Um, thanks, been very helpful. Thank you so much. Um, that's right, you did glaze the sand. I think it would be really cool to completely or selectively glaze a black and white piece. Yeah, you know what? That's an interesting idea. And then you would do the glaze with color, right? So it's like adding color to a black and white piece. I, I've done it before, but I don't think I even took a photo or scanned or anything. So this is an interesting thing. I'll, I'll, I may attempt this. Uh, okay, next one by Melanie C. So notice one thing that's very clear is your reds um, veer towards the purple. Now, this could be shadow because I do see shadow of a hand here. Um, and it's probably casting all over it. But when you have a lot of purple, and I do feel like it's regardless, it's a little more towards the purple. You have a lot of um, blue and red. So what are you missing? A bit of yellow, generally speaking. Um, and you do have some of it here. I think you just need a bit more. Even this, these areas, um, I don't think it's due to the uh, shadow that we're seeing. I actually think that's how you painted it. So I would probably just have a bit more of a of an equal um, presence of yellow, red, and blue. So here's the thing. This is something that used to happen to me all the time. Uh, I would not know how much yellow to add to my mix. So I'd put, I knew that I want to get a, a, like a dark color. So I, I know that my blue and my red are what gets it to be dark. So I'd always sh shade with blue and red. Now, if you notice, going back to Joseph's Bookvich, studies that people do of his work that end up looking a little amateurish you'll notice a lot of them are the grays aren't clear like i mentioned earlier but they are also way too purple and this sometimes happens because people are a little scared of the yellow they don't know how to add yellow without lightening it up the the mixture so when i see this kind of a very purple color scheme see look at look at my swatches here and look as i travel over this right it's very purple a bit pink some areas blue of course and others green but if i travel on this see see how it jumps between the yellow and the red and the orange so a bit more of that um could go a long way just to equalize it not look so purple um one more thing i would say the colors could use some work this blue doesn't feel like it's it's related enough to these colors here, but I may be mistaken. But I would say the more obvious thing to me is the uh, wet and wet. So a bit more um, planning to get these areas to blend better. Now, I don't know if I have a tool here that can um, maybe liquefy. No, not liquefy. Something that will just blur it a bit. What I usually do is I'll just, I'll do this for a second. I'll, um, Duplicate the layer and then I'll do filter blur Gaussian blur I'll just blur it out. Where's my menu? My menu just disappeared. I should have a blurring menu. Oh, here it is um, And do like very blurry We'll give it a second there we go and then I'll do this. So then if I delete this layer, you see some of that. You see just a bit of it here and there, especially in the shadows where things tend to be a little more ambiguous, uh, I think will go a really long way. See, even where you see these details here with all the, you know, I don't know what you'd call these even, uh, seeds, is it seeds? It's just the fruit. Even here, don't be scared to add a bit of ambiguity. It just gives a cleaner impression of the entire scene you see see how 
makes it look like flow, like it's very nice. It's a very nice effect to incorporate. Um, so a bit more emphasis on this. What, what I would say about, um, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, what I would say, I'll just do the control Z. Uh, about this part, I do think it will benefit here. I do think it'll benefit from a little ambiguity, but I want to command you for the patience to get the full range of values on each and every one of these seeds. It's really good. So you have the highlights and then you have the shadows in between them. So I, I'm, I don't want to be too harsh on it because like, way to go. You actually got all of these details done. Now it's a matter of uh, improving your accuracy. Once you improve your accuracy, a bit more accurate colors, a little bit more control of wet and wet, it's going to go to a whole new level. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, great, great job, Melanie. And thank you so much for submitting. Thank you for the courage. You did a great, great job. Um, uh, thank you, Ananya. I'm very happy you enjoyed this one. Lynn, can you wash over a part of the pomegranate with a light yellow wash to show us the difference? Yes. Uh, actually, I thought of doing that, but let me, and I didn't, but let me do this. What I would actually do is edit the photo, but yeah. So let's, and it's going to be hard, obviously, because we're going to add on top of it a very kind of gentle wash. Uh, but let's see. So I'm going to lower the opacity to kind of mimic a thin glaze. And then, so I wouldn't go obviously very yellow. It's going to be very jarring unless I do this. You see? So this would be one way of doing it. Just a bit less purple. See the difference? How would that make sense, uh, Lynn? Now, one more way to do this is to grab a relatively neutral yellow. So I'm taking it from here where it's very strong all the way to a bit more of a blended one. And then you can be a little more, a little more courageous on the opacity here, you see? And that would be kind of the difference, right? It's just very purple. Okay. So yeah. Uh, it's almost as if, so if I take this kind of a purple, almost towards the blue, and I just cover it up like this, you see? Just made it very purple. Or maybe even strong purple, but just lower the opacity. More like this, see? Just very purple. And then when you remove it, oh, it makes a little more sense. Um, so of course, the ideal solution would be to mix the right colors from the beginning and have them right the first time. And I do think it's influenced a bit by the shadow, but not fully. I do recognize a little purple. And that used to happen to me a lot. All of my darks used to be purples. And once you learn that it's okay to add a lot of yellow, uh, things improve very fast. Um, Richard, I don't remember if I've seen you here, Richard. Uh, hopefully you are, if not. Uh, so I love Something about this that I really love is how it's a very specific study. That's how a study should be done. Very specific. Um, you're working on almost a very specific technique of like, how do I differentiate between light and dark, right? So you have the snow and the white and then everything else. Uh, so great. For the purpose of a study, this is great. Of course, if you want like true accuracy, you'll have to match the colors, of course, and the values a bit more. But I do have a feeling that this uh, is more of a study. Now, I am curious to see if we examine this blue. I want to compare this to this. I want to see the difference. Yep. So we have one that's more towards the green. That was my feeling. Uh, again, just pay attention to the purples um, because this is almost turns into a purple there. Just pay attention to the tendency to use a lot of purple in the shadows. Now, some people say purple is a great color to shade with, and I, I don't disagree, but I'm just saying every case should be examined in its own context. And here, most of these are just, you know, this kind of a greenish thing, you know, which, which is a little different. Here, it's, it's the closest, um, I would say. Uh, so if that's something you're aiming for, just something to have in mind. Um, other than that, great work, but great, great study, got the job done. This you left probably paper white, just pay attention, you know, it's, it's not white per se, it's more of a bluish tone. All of these things, again, the magic is in those nuances, they're very hard to capture, so it's very hard to really capture them. Um, 
Here's something good for you to think about, Richard. Do another attempt, but now try and match the colors as well. And I always say, do a value study. This time I'm giving you the other type of homework. Try and actually paint with the same colors. So for example, go for a dark here for the uh, beanie. Actually try and go for the colors. Go for this little you know, darkish blue for this band. Go take it more towards the green for the J, maybe a bit more muted, right? For the whatever. Try and match it a little more accurately in terms of the colors. That's what I want to see by you. And then let's take it to the, what is it? Like a, a neutral kind of brown. I don't even know for the face, right? See this? Try and go a little more accurate. And feel free to use for the snow, just, you know, opaque paint or uh, whatever to get that down. But but try and match the actual colors you see this time. I think it'll be a great kind of practice session for you. See, I'm doing it very rough, but you get the idea. Try to go for the colors too. Um, yeah, but great job. And that's how a study should be done. That's really specific. You work on a specific skill, specific technique. Uh, I love the background here. Again, a bit purple, you know, just a bit of a yellow on everything could go a long way. Just saying. Um, the way I would fix it actually would be to play around with the colors. I do like a layer you said it was probably You're right. Uh, mm, no, no, I'm not sure. I'll figure it out. But like I would play around with the white balance, color balance, all of those good stuff. Uh, but yeah, great, great job. Um, let's see here, somewhere up there, uh, blurring the pomegranate in the back really made the one in the front much more focal. Yep, that's the goal. And and it's a smooth and and, gl and, and reflective surface. So you want to show that. It's really fun to show those kinds of effects. Spite is uh, uh, drawing Jesus Christ for Christmas, that's cool. Uh, Plumpy, this might be my favorite so far, cool. Uh, Joey, Richard, this is a style that I love with watercolor, speaks a specific style and I just really like it. That's cool. Uh, hey, PP, how are you doing? Pat likes this one too. Good. So let's move on to the next one. We are more than halfway through. So we have Svetlana who sent five paintings. Now there are no references. And Tank, we're, after that, we're going to uh, do uh, three of yours. Uh, so I hope you're still here. Um, so Svetlana, really, really good job. I actually don't have much to say because I don't have the references. Um, but you clearly have great control in wet and wet. Um, like I can really see all of the uh, thought and planning behind it. Edges, you're really pushing it as far as, as possible, <coughs> which is something I want to do in my own work. Um, I want to be able to do this. Uh, let's look at a few more. I believe one is zoomed in. Oh, why is this rotated? It was not rotated. Uh, when I saved it, that's weird. Um, is it the same one? Yep, I believe it's the same one. So zoomed in. Uh, there's one I really like this one too. I don't know why it rotates them. That's weird. Sometimes files get messed up in email. Uh, but like you clearly have great control over wet and wet. Um, one of the things I would like, look at this. This looks so good. Um, and if that's the style you're after, like way to go. And the reason I'm saying if that's the style is I just want to make sure you try out different things as well so that you can incorporate it into this and not let this be your comfort zone. And I know it's funny to say because I find this ch very challenging to do this technique. So it's funny to say, watch out for this becoming your comfort zone, but just it could, you know, everything could become a comfort zone. So I'm just saying maybe you want to consider trying out some more solid, like really almost like this one. Like this is a very solid edges kind of painting, right? And I almost do this to a fault sometimes, but I'm just saying, try it out. Now, one more thing I noticed is you're, you tend to go for very cool or very blue combinations which is funny because this one in particular has a bit more red and orange in it. So this balance I like better. Um, you tend to go for a lot of blues and your blues tend to be very neutral. So I'd be very 
challenge to find something like this in your work. Just throwing it out there to be aware of. Are you doing it on purpose? Are you just resorting to using the same blue and maybe a bit of yellow, of red, sorry, to get your mixes in? Because here's my theory. I've seen a lot of people move from, over the years, move from this kind of a blue to a more well-rounded color scheme like this. And I would say even this because it has a bit, a bit of that green in here and a very gentle uh, red and yellow on the guitar and the strap. So I've seen a lot of people make that transition and their work becomes like, wow. And your work is already wow. So if I were to take this gray blue that you tend to use and I were to switch over, make it a little more um, strong as in a blue, but I do want to preserve the value. Don't not make it too light. So maybe something like this. Yeah, that works. And now look at what if I just reimagine. And again, for these types of works, it's mere suggestions because it's great, great work. Um, I'm not going to correct your work. It's really good. But just imagine. Let me do this in a separate layer. Just imagine getting a bit of a stronger blue right next to the yellow. Again, just imagine, just a jacket. Look at how it just adds a lot of, because when I look at this thing, I think to myself, why, why is everything saturated by the blues? But look at what happens once you add just a bit of saturation to the blue. Suddenly it's like, wow, it makes sense. So I'm just giving you a suggestion, just throwing it out there because your blues are very consistently muted. And that's okay, again, style, you know, whatever it is, whatever you want. Your blues are muted, and if that's what you're going for, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But I'm just saying, uh, this is a different one. Like here it's a little stronger, but still quite muted. So I'm just offering this as a suggestion. Look at here, this is nice. This was the strongest one you've had. But look at what happens once you just try and, again, equalize the saturation just a bit. Uh, I feel like it makes it more wow. Your technique is great. You're, you have some great control, wet and wet, something that a lot of people dream about, including myself. Like I have a lot of work to do in that regard. Um, I think you could explode in terms of like really something amazing. Um, so yeah, keep at it. Great, great job. Really good. I love this. I like it a lot. Um, you could, you know, I could start nitpicking and say, if this is the background, why is the light so strong? Maybe it's light. Uh, maybe it's a, a crowd behind the singer. Maybe it's um, maybe it's uh, the lighting, and maybe it's a show. You know, there could be a million reasons for this. So I'm not gonna nitpick, uh, but like really, really interesting work. Like even here, you know. So what we saw earlier with the ears. Look at how, just like a a bit of um. I don't want to go too too strong here, but even just. Look at this, like just a bit of pink can go a long way. Uh, I'm gonna have to use a different tool for this one. See, even if you keep it a little more muted, it just makes something there pop, you know? Just a bit, not too much. See, um, because right now it's a bit tonal again. It's a bit like it's the same kind of muted red, orange, brown. Um, just different, you know. See, so just break it off a bit. You could go like a really long way. So yeah, I, I love these works. Great, great job. Um, Rattlesnake, I love this live video. I learned so much from you, Liron. Yeah, I'm so happy. These are super fun. It's funny how the live streams get like the fewest views, but they're the most fun for me too. Uh, just as fantastic. Oh, Tad, good. I'm here playing a rooster name pl painting a rooster nameplate for mother-in-law, but I'm here. Oh, cool, cool. So yours are coming up right now. Uh, I'll just see what else is new in the chat. Blur the edges and make the focal very clear. I haven't tried that. Oh, more homework. Yeah, and somewhere up there, one thing you can do uh, <coughs> is blend the um, pre-wet so that you get um, a 
you get a smooth edge. I've shown this in a few videos. Pre-wet an area, and then you know you'll get a smooth, smooth edge there. Uh, it's easier than putting paint and then blending the edge. <laughs> I'm so not sending anything. Yeah, okay, no, feel free to, it's okay. No pressure whatsoever. Um, so yeah, let's get to that. Just remember my orange shy one is my ver uh, first ever watercolor painting, okay. Um, so I hope we're uh, talking about the same paintings. We'll see, because I think you sent me. Well, let me know if these are indeed the ones. So I have one, two, and three. Uh, so here we go. One, two, three. So hopefully these are the ones. John, you now have the chat on the screen. You're looking more pro. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's that's where we're headed. I just need to figure out how to crop it a little and have the lines go move down a bit. I'm not sure how to do that, but I'll figure it out. Um, Amelia, I'm really anxious about my paintings appearing. So do you mean on, on the live stream? Um, so again, it's not going to be probably today, but if you email them, and I think you have emailed them, right? Uh, if anyone regrets, just tell me. Don't don't include them. But like, don't 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 feel anxious at all. It's it's all learning experience, you know. I'm showing you my paintings for years now, and and if I look at some of the older ones, they're some of them are terrible. That's perfectly okay, you know. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, thank you so much, John. Uh, Erica, Haley, Ron, did you happen to receive mine yesterday? Um, hmm, I th think I have. I think I have. Let me check just real quick. Um, yeah, 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 I got it. Thank you. Oh, nice. Very nice. I got yours, Erica. Uh, I got Sven's. I'll, I'll get the rest of them in the next live stream. Ooh, Sven has some interesting works. I got Bahir. Really good. I got yours, Tala. Uh, Amelia, I got yours. Oh, these are cute. These are really good. You don't, you don't have to worry about them at all, Amelia. These are great. And of course, I love the most muted one. No, you're good. You're good. Don't worry about it at all. You're great. Uh, and Rattlesnake too. Yeah, so uh, sorry to disappoint some of you. It's not going to It's not gonna happen today probably because I will get through these and then we'll move closer to wrapping it up. But I promise you, um, probably in two weeks, we'll do another one. Uh, if anyone haven't sent me yet theirs and you want me to show them, just send them over and I'll, we'll do that. Uh, so Tank... There we go. You're going to be the last for today because my voice is starting to get tired. Um, change the width inside the browser source. Yeah, so here's the thing. Oh, you know what? That could be right. You are smart. Thank you so much, Josh. That's brilliant. Let's see. So let's do 600. Oh, man, you're smart. Yeah, that's great. Okay, okay. I need a tech support person. There we go. You're a genius. Everyone, uh, we have to clap. Thank you, Josh, for fixing. Well, let's do some cheers, too. For fixing the, the chat. Thank you so much. That's really cool. That is great. Okay, we're on it. Yeah, I was like, how do I change that? I, I played around with the CSS and everything. It doesn't work. Yeah, that's perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, ta okay, okay, enough enough delays. Let's get to it. Uh, so this is, I assume, the reference again, because I've seen also the signature, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Roland, right? Yeah, so you did a good job. Uh, I would say the couple of first things, first, I like that you dropped this area, funny enough, because I don't, I don't like it as much. It feels a little too stuck there. It's almost like you made a decision between this and that, and you decided to remove that. So I'm actually all for that. And I'm happy you changed it up. Uh, your colors are really well matched, which is good. It's not something that's easy to do. You really match them well. Uh, this pink, this brown. Um, the one thing you want to pay attention to, I, I guess, is um, just mid values, especially, and values in general. Uh, just a bit more strength um, along the trees, of course. And that's the most visible, I would say. Um, That's the most visible area. Just a little more contrast with the sky and uh, and the snowy rooftops, of course. See, see the the difference, especially around here. Right, just gives it more of a structure to everything snowy. And then I would say I actually like that the original has these vast shadows moving around. Like, don't be scared of that. You can go a little lighter, and maybe even blue in this example. 
but don't be scared to to do these you know larger kind of overarching shadows uh, I think it looks really good and uh, it's a great way of framing the painting now one more small small nuance um, usually when you get these types of roads um, depending on where the light comes from and in this example um, hmm, the light comes from the right side so what you'll get pretty much from the right side so what you'll usually end up getting is let me think for a second so you'll get the trench but then you'll get the part that's kind of um, right because it's you know it's it's around it goes up and then it goes behind into the trench you'll get something like this almost um, so maybe that's something to consider you see how the right side actually could have done this better um, without this there we go so you see how it's it's Imitating the shape of the ground. That's the thing you want to take away from this. Let me show you again If I'm able to oh, yeah, I'm with the eraser genius Look at how it goes like it dips and it goes up and it continues See so you want to imitate that uh, I feel like you don't and the, sh the um, You see the cast shadows follow that too you have the cast shadows, if I'm not mistaken, or no, maybe you don't have them, but I'm missing a bit of that feel of a trench. So if it goes up and down almost like this, I changed it a bit, it doesn't even make sense. But let's say it goes like this. So just make sure you get this pattern of, again, light and then slightly darker around here. You have some of it and again, light and slightly darker and this in the middle is kind of a mid value I would say maybe halfway through you know something like that just to give the feeling of a bump and following the shape of the ground um, and the cast shadows play a very important role in that so if you have let's say a similar value to this and then you just get them to bounce around the shapes you did okay um, so yeah the usually yeah it will look hmm. so i'm trying to figure out like what's okay yeah i got it now i think i got it i just don't real i don't really understand this what you'll usually get is down up down up because the car tires leave a mark but here i see two so maybe there are a few marks there what you'll usually get is just one and two uh but yeah so this is really to pay attention more to the details <laughs> yeah just you use obs a lot that was brilliant thank you um yeah i just did it now every live stream i'm like i'll get the chat to show i'll get the chat to show and i never do um one more thing that's interesting here tat tank is that there is a bit more nuance in the sky so can you tell how there's a bit of a blue there but then maybe fog that makes it a little warmer uh i'm missing a bit of that here so it's just a blue now i don't have a problem with that but the thing is you have the blue on the snow below and then so kind of think about the overall balance and maybe you'll find that, you know, going, doing a smooth transition from cool down to warm, uh, from warm, sorry, down to cool will look good as an overall theme for the painting. So if I just grab this bit of, you know, warmth and just kind of let it influence some part of the scene. And obviously this layer, this part of the layer is wrong, right? It should be like a, like an actual brown color, a little darker too, probably like this uh, but you get the point hopefully sorry for drawing all over this but yeah great job uh, more details in the trees you know look at how uh, the original artist included these highlights in the trees um, so that what you want to do is let's get rid of this actually let's do it like that that's fine see light coming from the right or it could even be snow so just by bringing in those highlights it will give a lot of, um, I want to brush. It'll give a lot of character and life to those trees, you see? And, and it justifies their uh, shadows by adding a highlight. See that? Just gives them a little more depth. Of course, you want to balance it out with the entire scene, but you see, look at this. It's really, really nice. So there's often a lot of small details and nuances that are a little hard to 
tell. Uh, I was scared of messing it up after doing good job on the houses, but that was, but that's my second error. Yeah, yeah, no, you did a, an excellent job, especially considering this is the second ever, but, but it's great, it's great. Um, so here, so this was the orange shy one. Um, yeah, so obviously the colors, uh, a little more green. Um, it's kind of the same thing with the blue and with the purple we talked about earlier. People just tend to miss the yellow. Um, so look at all this, right? There's some nice yellow swooshes in the sky here. Um, and it's a shame not to include them. Uh, and if I look at your, uh, li your light values, they're, they're just cool, right? So imagine if I were just to take the coolness of let's say this area and just get completely rid of the yellows. You see how much it removes just a lot of interest in the sky, not to mention the sky balances out these oranges too here. You have both orange here and there. Very pale, right? It's a peach kind of orange, very light. Um, of course, one thing to note is it's very hard technique wise. What the artist did here, getting these clouds to look that way, is very, very hard. So uh, I think you've made a great attempt and great effort, and I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's a technique that will come with time. What I can say on a technical level, this, the way it's done is by wetting the paper or painting over it with, let's say, the blue, and then coming back with very thick paint very thick paint once it's 20 30 percent dry and then just doing swooshes like this very thick paint and then what happens is it still maintains its integrity of the shape because you can tell you can see the shape of these very clearly but it also has some softness to it it's not an easy technique at all and i would practice it in isolation just do a wash go over it do another wash go over it that's the best way to learn it um, and of course, you could go into more, just more details, pay attention more to these small, you know, small resolution shapes. You actually got a lot of them in. That's a really, that's very commendable. You got a lot of these in. So I'm actually very happy. Uh, even those little white dots, you know. And whenever we paint based on a painting, you're painting based off of someone else's impression. So there will be some limitations to that. You can expect a completely different result if you paint based on the photo. One last thing I will mention. You got it down really well in most of the painting. But just here, notice how you made this area a little wider. So one thing to remember is when looking at the horizon, things tend to squeeze closer together. Just make sure it doesn't turn into a really wide area. You know, I showed this before when people paint, like maybe it's a um, lake or something on the horizon and the lake or thing looks like this, but they paint it like that. Just this tendency to flatten things out. Just make sure you don't go in that direction and you're good. Uh, really, really good. Great job. Uh, the rest will come with time. Color balance, all of that. Uh, let's look at uh, this one. So this one, this one is my favorite probably. Uh, you did a really good job. That's a perfect one to practice too. So simpler colors, more of a narrow uh, range of colors. Um, and yeah, this is great. This is really great. Um, of course, that's where most people get caught up in the technique with these clouds. It's tough, you know, I can see the original one, very gentle and soft kind of thing. It's, it's hard to capture. And then what ends up happening is the timing was too late. And instead of being a darker cloud, it ends up lifting the paint. So you get a lighter shape. That's fine. Happened to me a million times. It sometimes still happens to me. Um, so it, you will get the timing with time. One thing you can do if you don't feel like you're skilled enough to get it, just let it dry and then do a thin, thin glaze. Just paint it like a thin, by the way, you notice that's a gray and the gray looks blue. Uh, so I'll, I'll actually have to go a little warmer probably even more. So just a thin layer and treat it as a separate layer. You get it? Uh, just treat it as a separate layer and you'll do good. Now, one more thing about the sun, one way to get this effect also is by pre-wetting, just like I've shown you before. You pre-wet an area, 
with water and then this along this edge along this edge all around it's gonna stay a smooth transition so it's a better way to guarantee you'll get a smooth transition from white to yellow to orange okay pre-wet then do it oh that makes sense and i love that you showed the whole setup it's really cool <coughs> but as a as a like just a final result you've done a great great job here uh, one thing i would say just for the darkest darks I know this is kind of a monochromatic, not monochromatic, but it's a very single-minded kind of color scheme. So, right, you, you get the peaches and the yellows and everything. Sometimes what can really benefit those, just have that idea in mind, in the darkest darks, don't stay in the same color. Switch it over to be maybe a little cooler. And it will sometimes improve the balance. See? See the difference? Even if the original photo or painting was like that, I would argue it would improve that too. Just a bit more blue. I know it sounds crazy, but when the entire painting is warm, even just a bit of blue, and look at, look at the transition I'm making. So look here in the color selection, I'm in the red. Look at this, see? Such a small difference that can go a long way. This actually makes a big, big difference. So let me show you here. This versus this, right? Versus even this. This is a little closer actually, but yeah, you get the point hopefully. Maybe the green would look a little different. See, these nuances actually make a big difference. And sometimes when everything is so darn warm, just a bit of that coolness in one, I would go even cooler, actually. I would exaggerate this a little more. Can go a long, long way, okay? Um, and you often see this kind of harmony in digital art where it's very easy to mix the right color. Digital artists, concept artists tend to do that a lot to play around with. They would probably push it to be even more like this. Uh, no, maybe not as much, I'm exaggerating. Maybe more, but still dark, something like that. You'd see that quite often uh, in concept art. Uh, but yeah, that was the last one. I really hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, adding the blue somewhere up there really changed it. Uh, Ted, that's my first one ever. I messed up the clouds. Dude, if this is your first watercolor ever, let me get all my crap out of the way. It's crazy good. I wouldn't worry about it at all. That's a great, great job. Keep at it. Uh, you have something. Keep at it. I think you have something really good going on. Um, I like the boats too. Um, I like a lot of things about this one. So yeah, it's from a tutorial, I see now. Um, a bit lacking in mid values in the water, you know? If you want to make this strong, make this darker. So I'll just sample. See, this is a little stronger. Let's make it a little more muted even. Just close off on those highlights, you see? close off on them make them even more unique and then get the bridge get it to be a little cooler and maybe even a little darker and look at how fantastic this looks see maybe there's a bit of a reflection there in the water see just really improves the overall feel of it um could even put another one here you can make him blue as well uh you don't have to though just uh Possibility. You see how it, it's just a more interesting balance, I think. Paints gray, not watered down black, right? Uh, yeah, paints gray could probably work. Um, although the way I mix those is I use my same blue, the same one I use for the rest of the painting. In this example, there isn't much of it, but the same one. And I'll just add red and yellow all the way until it's a muted blue and it's fairly dark. Sometimes I'll just add neutral tint if I'm lazy. <laughs> but I guess, yeah, I hope that makes sense. And I'm happy that this live stream was fun for everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Everyone that sends me a painting, don't worry. I'll get to yours. We'll do one. In t I say in two weeks because next week there won't be a live stream. There will be a short video. Okay. So probably the one after that. In fact, let me just put it in the schedule so I don't forget. Um, so we're looking at the... Yeah, okay, I have it. I critique your paintings. Paintings live. That's going to be number five. Uh, so yeah, we can do that for sure. 
Uh, thank you so much, John. Amazing paintings today and excellent critiques, Ron. Happy Hanukkah and Christmas. Thank you. Yeah, happy happy Christmas and happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah to everyone who celebrates. Uh, somewhere up there, we'll have many, many more of these streams. Thank you, Nancy, so much. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you to everyone who sent the paintings. Uh, you should and could be proud of yourself. We have Arpad. We have David E. We have David H. Uh, we have Heather. We have Isha. We have Lisa, we have Luis, we have Melanie, we have Richard, Svetlana, uh, Tank. And yeah, that's a, that's a lot of people. Uh, so thank you so much. Thank you, Josh. Uh, much, much appreciated. Uh, everyone, have a great uh, weekend. The orange one is Javid Tabtabai. Oh, okay, yeah, he's amazing. He's incredible. He's a master of these subtle wet and wets. But he's also very much along the tonal shade. He likes to use the same color and then just shade it. Uh, but yeah, have a great weekend. And um, um, I will see you in the videos uh, next week and Saturday too. Um, I may be even more active in terms of messages and, and responding because it's my, again, week off and I really enjoy reading comments in this week. Uh, so it may happen. Uh, thank you so much, Plumpy Lump. Thank you, everyone. So we're going to wrap up for today and I will see you on Saturdays, Saturdays video. Until then, take care.